Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. I am Chioma Isiadinso. I'm the CEO and founder of Expartus. And Expartus is an admissions consulting company that I founded in 2002 after working on the admissions board at Harvard Business School. And prior to that, I had served on the admissions board at Carnegie Mellon at the School of Public Policy and was a director there. I want to welcome each and every one of you to today's webinar, How to Write Leadership Essays That Get You Admitted to B School. I'm really excited about our time together today and I have quite a lot I want to cover. So I'm going to go super fast and um, I'm going to touch on the myths that um, sometimes um, accompany the leadership essays. I'm going to touch on you know, why it's important, how admissions people view the leadership quality and hence the leadership essay. Um, and then I'm going to spend the bulk of our time talking about how to actually write successful leadership essays and what components should be in them and things like that. And then at the very end, I will like to share with you a bit about Expartus, um, our approach, what we've done, how we do it, and why we do it the way we do it. Okay, so I hope that you can just turn off your um, your um, phones if you can. Um, if you can just grab a notebook and pen, jot down some things, even questions. I know we are uh, recording this for GMAT Club and I want to thank GMAT Club for the opportunity to be part of um, this series. And um, I want to um, encourage all of you that if you those of you that have questions at the end of watching this webinar, um, recording that you will, you know, shoot us your questions at info at expartos.com and uh, we can engage uh, with you that way. Okay, so why don't we get started? The first thing I want to tell you guys is that leadership is alive and well at business school. Don't let anyone tell you anything otherwise. I know a lot has changed in the past couple of years. You know, I've been in the admissions industry for over 20 years and I've seen a major shift of you know, um, the policies uh, um, amongst many of the top schools to go from many, many, many essays, essays that were quite lengthy to just um, one essay, in some cases, a couple of essays, shorter word counts. Um, some essays are vague in terms of their wording. Tell us anything you want to tell us about yourself. Um, other essays are um, still specifically mentioned in leadership, you know, schools like Kellogg, schools like Talk. But I want you to know that regardless of whether the schools actually say in their essay, tell us about your leadership, anything, trust me, the one thing that they are looking at is leadership potential of every single applicant out there, okay? And if I had to boil it down to like the most important thing, it's honestly your leadership potential. Okay, and it's not about titles and it's not about what some of you might think, um, and we'll talk about myths in a few a few minutes, but um, your potential, like they're looking at like, what is this person going to be like in the future? You know, what kind of an alarm are they going to be? Um, are they going to be hearing about you in the future, um, you know, 10, 15, 20 years um, down the road? And so they are scrutinizing leadership to make sure that you're going to be a fit. Let's look at Harvard Business School as an example, right? I mean, look at their mission statement. We educate leaders who make a difference in the world. Leaders who make a difference, not hard workers, not people who do their jobs well, but leaders, right? And then if you look at their um, evaluation, um, one of the evaluation components that they look at, this is straight from their website. And they tell you what they're looking for. They want people who have a habit of leadership. What does that mean? Footprints of leadership, right? People who have demonstrated it in a variety of settings, whether it's at work, at school, um, in your community. They don't really care. They just want to know that you have that propensity for um, you know, leadership and always being attracted to opportunities to lead. Okay? So and they're pretty flexible in terms of like, you know, could it be on the military field, right? If you're like, you know, um, working, uh, you know, on a co in a combat squad or it could be through entrepreneurship. It could be through 
traditional work environments, you know, that's quite bureaucratic, where you don't have a lot of opportunity to demonstrate leadership in the traditional sense, but through initiatives at work, you can demonstrate leadership. Stanford, for example, does the same thing. They highlight what in their mission statement. They want, you know, people who create great ideas, all of these things, but how do they end it? Insightful leaders who change the world, worded differently, right? But again, we see that phrase, you know, insightful leaders who change the world. They're looking for leadership. Same thing in terms of the evaluation criterion. If they, um, yes, they look at, you know, intellectual vitality, they look at personal qualities, all these elements are important in, uh, important as they evaluate um, candidates, right? But the most important, well, one of the most important criteria I would mention is your demonstrated leadership potential. This is where a lot of times applicants say, you know, um, I'm going to be a leader someday. I'm going to be an incredible leader. You know, I have the, like individuals say, I have the potential. Well, they're looking for your demonstrated evidence up to this point when you're applying, right? And then they use that to then project into the future and assess whether or not you'd be a good fit, okay? Now, when it comes to writing leadership essays, I know that there's so many myths out there. One of them is the sense that you need to have an important title, you know? Whether you are like the director of the nonprofit board or assistant director or something, or you were the president of the, you know, banking or financial, you know, uh, organization at your university, or, you know, you were the captain of your team, it doesn't matter. You know, you don't have to have those formal titles. That's one really important piece of good news I want to start with. So don't buy into that myth that you have to have a formal title of leadership. In fact, when I think about some of the extraordinary recommendation letters I've read, um, one of them is of an ex client who um, chose his recommendation from his um, soccer coach, you know, and his soccer coach talked about how, you know, this young man, yes, he didn't have the title of captain, but he was the most influential and, and impactful person on his team. He was incredibly motivating of his teammates. And the stories he shared were the kinds of things that really made it clear to the schools that he applied to that he was a natural leader and he had that demonstrated um, evidence of leadership and that propensity for um, seeking out opportunities to have an impact in somebody else's life. And, and yet he didn't, he didn't have the formal title of captain or vice captain or whatever the case may be. So don't buy that myth, okay, that you have to have an important title. Um, a second myth I want to talk about is this idea that you have to, you know, have direct reports that you manage, like you kind of have to manage people. Absolutely not the case. In fact, most people who are applying to business school don't have the luxury of having managed people formally, right? Maybe informally, maybe interns or outside of work. Um, so what's important is actually being able to demonstrate influence, right? So it could be um, your ability to, um, you know, go the extra mile in your analysis to kind of create value um, versus you, you know, having formal people that you manage, okay? So they're not looking at, they're not looking for the best managers, they're looking for the best leaders. So you don't have to worry about this when you're writing, you know, your business school leadership essay that you haven't managed people directly before. The third myth I want to highlight for you guys is this idea that you have to have had such a significant, um, you know, massive achievement before you can write a leadership essay. Not true. Absolutely not true. Um, impact is important, right? But impact could be on a person, you know? It doesn't necessarily have to be on like 100 people. Um, impact could be you know, it's all about like meaningful examples that showcase leadership where you actually changed somebody. So it could be changing somebody's life, it could be changing an organization, it could be changing your group, the way you guys go about um, the systems you have in place, the processes you use to create value. So don't underestimate how incredible your leadership uh, footprint could, could actually be, and yet, you know, you allow sort of a lot of the noise and the chatter of, you know, you have to have this, this, and this to 
um, obscure your um, your view of what's actually important, okay? You want to write essays that demonstrate, um, yes, that you have leadership footprints, but those footprints don't necessarily have to fit within, like, the um, expectations that sometimes I see on these um, admissions forums and people say, okay? And this is coming from someone who's seen a gazillion essays, applications, etc., and, you know, 20 plus years of doing this and seeing a ton of clients, both expert as clients, and when I served on the admissions board at Harvard, seeing client, you know, applicants who got in who didn't necessarily have, you know, meet these um, three elements and who were, who were incredibly successful, okay? Now, I want to just spend a couple of minutes and talk to you guys about the um, core aspects of going about um, writing a winning leadership essay. Um, it's, a, it's very simple. There's just sort of four steps in this process. It's the self-reflection, it's the outline, it's the actual writing of the essay, and there's a revision. And I'm going to go step by step into each of this. This is very important. I know that what I'm saying here is not, you know, something you haven't seen before. Yet it's amazing to me over the years, when I talk to applicants who have done this and done it unsuccessfully, written unsuc unsuc unsuccessful um, essays and applications and are now having to reapply. And when we've probed about this, the experience in terms of the writing process, we often find out that um, many of them skipped an aspect in this, of this process, okay? So I want to start by highlighting the importance of each of these aspects, okay? And don't, um, I know it can be tempting, you know, time can be a factor and you're sort of, you know, pressure to, to, to rush your, your application, to rush through your essays. Um, I really encourage you to not miss any step um, in this four-step um, process, okay? When it comes to the self-reflection, I want you guys to think about when have you led, okay? Again, not necessarily by um, selection or you're sort of like, you know, tapped to go and do this, but when have you stepped up, right, and led something? When have you created something? When have you initiated something, persuaded, fixed, solved? You know, all of these things. If anything, I want you to imagine a scenario where you are mind mapping this whole process and you're trying to figure out, like, you know, um, how do you sort of, like, start the brainstorming process? Well, an easy way to do that is get a blank sheet of paper and just mind map it, like in your personal life, academic life, professional life. And you can even say community life, for example. Personal life could be in your family, your friends, you know, how have you, and then you go through this sort of created, initiated, persuaded, those kinds of things. And then you do it in your academic life. When have you done these things? In your professional life and then in your community service life, right? And then based on the examples that you begin to kind of pull out, you begin to like have a clearer sense, at least a full picture before you even start writing. Sometimes what people do, um, applicants, I've seen this mistake, they just, they're so tempted to get to getting started that they just like, latch on to one story or like this must be a great one I think this is a really good one and they start writing and then weeks later they realize um I'm not making progress I'm hitting a dead end or something is really missing and then they have to sort of go back to the drawing board so I really want and they've lost a lot of time right and it creates a lot of frustration and anxiety and stress you don't need that Okay, this is like a simple process if you follow it. In writing your leadership essay, you just have to invest in the step-by-step um, -step process. Start with a self-reflection, okay? Mind map it, look at every aspect of your life, and then find the best examples. Write all the examples and then begin to prioritize them. As you're doing this, I also want you to think about the kinds of um, values the schools that you are targeting have, like, how do they value leadership, you know? Um, and sometimes they will tell you, if you spend enough time getting to know a school, you get a sense of, you know, a school's leadership style or, you know, like, what they'd like to see. And I'm not trying to say that there's only one kind of leader, but you'll get a sense of, like, the brand of a school and the, even, like, the kinds of students you meet, the majority of them, that tells you something about a school, okay?
And then as more than um, looking at the school's brand, I want you to also consider your personal brand, you know, and what kind of a personal brand, like what kind of a leader are you as you're doing this reflection, right? Are you a maverick leader, right? Are you a charismatic leader? Are you a quiet leader? your thought leader, right? Are you collaborative? Um, and on and on. There's a the variety of um, adjectives I can use to describe different leadership styles that people have. You have to be clear on authentically who are you as a person. And that's where that comprehensive personal branding system that Expartus pioneered, um, you know, it's, and I'll talk about this at the end, you know, um, of our time together, is so vital because it is all part of putting the foundation, the building blocks of a solid application strategy. And so knowing what your, um, your brand is and as part of that, your leadership style you know, will help you hone in on like the best examples that will reflect that as you're also factoring in the types of leadership um, kind of culture that is school values as well. Okay, so now after you've done your um, self-reflection, branded yourself, you've got clarity around what it is you want to um, share about yourself, um, I now want you to take the time to invest in creating an outline. Again, this is something I've seen applicants get tripped up um, by. You know, it's very tempting to just want to get in front of your computer and start typing, right? Because you've done some soul searching, you have a general sense of where you want to go, and you want to start writing. Before you do that, I really, really want to encourage you to hit pause and force yourself to do an outline, okay? And ask yourself, okay, what are the skills that I really want to hone in on, okay? Because it's not as if you have um, unlimited space to talk about everything you want to talk about. So you want to really make sure that you're talking about the most important skills that you, you want to highlight that will give you, um, that will just give you a differentiated view from that, you know, from the admissions uh, board point of view, right? You also want to make sure that you are focusing not just on the, on the um, achievement that you have had, the admissions people can see your resume. They can see all their achievements. You've got to step back and say, okay, I achieved this, but so what, right? What, how did this achievement impact my group, impact lives, you know, impact X, Y, Z? Go beyond the obvious, okay, and go to the so what. That is extremely important as you're outlining the key things you want to highlight in um, your leadership essay. So going beyond achievements and making sure that you focus on impact, okay? Then you've got to also drill down and delineate how you went about doing what you did, right? Um, what were the obstacles that you experienced? What were the challenges? How did you go about doing it? What did you do? Um, so forcing yourself to bullet out these points will then help you hone in on, okay, that's not really that important, okay? This is critical. And to have a tight outline before you start writing, okay? And, you know, what ultimate result did you achieve and why did that matter, right? So as you get to the end of your essay, you also want to make sure that, you know, you step back and look at everything and ask yourself, you know, do my values uh, show up, right? Um, are my passions reflected, you know, um, my motivations? Would a reader really have a good sense of why I did what, what I did? Very, very important. Once you've get, got all these elements um, ironed out, uh, going through the outline process, now you're ready to write, okay? And this is the thing. And as I said in the beginning, it's tempting to write before you do these first two parts, okay? I really want to encourage you to make sure that you invest in the self-reflection and then the outlining of, of what you're going to write, and then you're going to find the actual writing process to be significantly easier than you may have originally thought it would be, okay? And once you get um, started in writing your essay, you're going to be able to make sure that, you know, you're able to reveal the values, the, the motivations, and more importantly, how you've gone about doing it and why you've done it the way you've done it, you know, and then 
you know, what you learned about yourself and, and about the leadership, perhaps, you know. So the writing process, as I said, becomes much um, easier, fluid, stress-free, etc., which is all like what you want anyway, right? And then the last part of the writing process um, in writing your leadership essay is the revision process. And one important um, thing I want to highlight here is I don't want you guys to think revision means I give my essay to five, ten different people to read and and weigh in and share their thoughts. That's not what revision is. Yes, you can have an individual that you trust, perhaps an, an alum of the school, um, to to weigh in or someone who knows you very, very well to be able to give you like an uh, additional perspective to just check for any blind spots or anything that um, you can add to strengthen the application. When I say revision, I'm often talking about something I've seen a lot of applicants do, which is the tendency to want to write a lot and to think that I've got to add so much in here, right? Less is always more. So when you re you're revising, the commitment really is to find ways to pare things down. So I've seen a million cases, well not a million, but a ton of cases where applicants have written an essay, it's about 1,200 words, and when it's been cut down and sharpened and sharpened and sharpened through the revision process, um, it's cutting out the fat and just keeping like the, the best of the meat, you know, um, it, it, you have a much richer, much more powerful leadership essay. So make sure that you also don't um, gloss over this process, but make sure you invest in the re revision process. And it might mean that you, you know, you write the essay once you're happy with where it is and as you're getting guidance um, from um, a trusted friend or an admissions coach who knows what they're doing, you're now able to get it to a place where you're really happy with it. I would advise you to hold off from submitting it. Just put it aside and sleep on it, you know, like move on to other things. And then maybe you can start working on other aspects of the application or another school. And then the time away from it can also like bring a little bit more, you know, clarity and help you to um, sharpen it even further, okay? So that's the four steps. Now I want to just touch on um, elements of what a good leadership essay must have, okay? It needs to review your personal brand. It goes without saying. Obviously, I'm biased. You know, that is like the core of, you know, what we we teach our clients at Expartus. And a lot of people don't understand what personal branding is. They think it's window dressing. They not they, they don't know what it is. And so they think it's a superficial thing and they gloss over it or they sort of poo-poo the idea and they're like, oh, it's not important. But they don't really know what they're, they don't fully understand what they're talking about. I'm telling you based on 20 years of the industry and incredible evidence um, with so many reapplicants who have applied to the most selective business schools in the world get in. And nothing is different about their story in terms of their GMAT score, their GPA, nothing changes other than they have a clear sense of what their personal brand is, so they were able to write applications that reflect their personal brands and make sure that the brand message, the themes about who they are, run through the entire application, not just essays, recommenders, resume, even the online application, and obviously, ultimately, through um, the one-on-one -on -one in engagement in the interviews. So make sure your essay reveals your personal brand. The other thing um, that I'll point out, the other aspect of a strong leadership essay is that it differentiates you from other strong applicants with very similar profiles. Admissions people can only take 10 to 15, perhaps 20%. So if you've got you know, 20, 20 applicants, you know, 10% of that, they're just gonna take two, right? Two to four. They're gonna say no to about 16 people. 16 of which 10 of them are great, right? So why should they say yes to you? It's making sure that you've written essays, particularly leadership essays, or showcase your leadership um, in a way that allows you to differentiate yourself from other people who are, who are coming from a similar profile. And that's what we specialize in in Expartus. So it's not just let's get into writing your essay, but everything from the branding to figuring out like you know, how are you compared to someone else with similar profile and things like that. Um, 
Then the next thing is you need to also, um, a strong leadership essay has to be able to showcase the kind of leader that you are, okay? Um, and I talked about this in, in um, earlier. And then finally, what this ultimately does is it allows admissions people to have a really good sense that, you know, the candidate that they're looking at is a good firm, um, fit for them. It confirms for them this person is a fit. They would, we would love them here and they would love being here. So that's very, very important, okay? Bad leadership essays, they have these um, elements to them. They are just basically a regurgitation of one's resume. Um, it's overly ambitious. People just try to, applicants try to pack in everything as if the admissions people didn't see other aspects of the application, you know, so they try to cover too much. Sometimes it's, you know, they fall into this mistake. They tend to like sound like they're just bragging. Um, let the recommenders brag for you, okay? And then finally, um, uh, the, you know, bad leadership essays tend to be very achievement focused as opposed to showing the so what of the achievement, okay? So I just wanted to make sure I share this with, with you guys. And then I actually want to share um, some examples, right? Like what are some good topics? You know, because I get this question a lot when I do webinars or I talk to um, applicants. You know, a lot of times people are struggling with, okay, what's a good topic? What should I write about? Well, you can write about your sports leadership, right? Um, and again, it doesn't have to be a captain of the tennis club, you know, tennis team. Um, it could be like your role in helping um, – your team um, overcome, you know, losing like their best player or something, like the experience of, you know, like kind of bringing the team together. What's that about? Like, how did you get involved? What idea did you come up with? Um, you know, you can write about academic leadership. You know, one of our clients talked about, you know, being part of a pilot um, at her school where they were trying to introduce a new course and she was part of a small team that um, you know designed the course you know with with a faculty member and then actually helped to teach the course and what she learned about herself and the whole process of figuring out what do you keep in and what what you know what do you keep out and how do you work with people who have very different different views about you know how you should go about things and the frustrations and lessons learned from that experience could be interesting could showcase leadership especially especially for someone who's coming from um, an early career profile and may not necessarily have a, a lot of work example to share right you could be co um, community leadership focused that works. I've seen it, I've seen it work may, many, many, many times. Um, you can also write about leadership in terms of helping an in, individual be successful. It could be in your personal life. It could be at work, you know. Um, those could work. Um, and then, you know, you could also write you know, choose examples around, you know, formal work leadership stories, you know, where you've gone above and beyond and making sure that it's clear that you've, you're not just sort of operating as a typical analyst, a typical um, engineer or whatever the case may be, but you've actually sort of raised your hand and, you know, you've um, gone way beyond what is expected of you. You know, so I always encourage our clients, you know, to think about what are the things that are broken, not working, frustrating you guys at work, and what can you do to create value, right? What doesn't exist right now that you can take on? Look for the small wins. Even if you're going to apply in a few months, let's say you're going to go round one or round two, you know, what could you do now? It's never too late to take initiative at work even um, to create value. Look for those opportunities. It could even be some, an example uh, um for, uh, like someone who's in private equity who is, you know, running analysis, the investment team is now looking to go a different direction. And then, you know, you're able to kind of identify something that no one else on the team is thinking about that has helped to change the direction that the uh, investment committee was going to go before. And now, based on your recommendations, you know, they're going to go a different route. And you know, and they, they weren't going to invest and now they're going to, they've invested and you can showcase, you know, the value that you've been able to create. Things like that all make for great examples of leadership. Um, I also wanted to just um, look at uh, two examples, you know, because I, I started the, um, uh, the webinar today saying that leadership is alive and well, right? And... I want to show you guys two examples of how you have um, 
you know, school like Harvard Business School, nowhere in their essay question do they say, tell me about your leadership accomplishments, right? So as you see the questions from this past cycle, they ask, as we review your application, what more would you like us to know as we consider your candidacy for the Harvard Business School MBA program, right? So what more? Tell us something else, you know? What should we consider? It's very open-ended. Um, and I've seen applicants, you know, handle this really um, in a variety of ways. Some people have done it uh, unsuccessfully where they just sort of, you know, uh, restate information that admissions people can see in different parts of the application. This is an essay that is asking us, you know, asking applicants to understand, to tell the story of your life, you know, tell us about who you are. And somewhere in that story, make sure you tell us about who you are as a leader, because we that's part of what we care about, without you necessarily saying, let me tell you about who I am as a leader. You know, so we had a client, for example, um, uh, let's call him John, who was reapplying to uh, Harvard Business School. And one of the things that John did successfully this time around was he talked about his family background, like who his family was and where they came from and the roots and like the incredible diversity um, in terms of just um, diversity on different levels, not just in the traditional sense, and how it really helped to shape who he is as a person, and how that really propelled him to start an organization to bring students together on, on his um, university, um, at his university, and the, what, you know, how that created value, and what he learned and what he enjoyed about that experience. That was his, his Harvard essay and nothing was different. He didn't retake his GMAT, he didn't, you know, his GPA didn't change, um, his work story didn't change fundamentally. But guess what? The branding and the emphasis changed, right? And he was able to pull out elements that really showcase his, um, you know, his international mindset, um, his collaborative, you know, um, just, celebration of diverse points of view um, and things like that, you know, and that's what made him, you know, to come across in a very authentic and genuine way. And he was able to um, apply, you know, he applied uh, a year ago, you know, um, and he applied to uh, four schools. Um, I believe there were Harvard, Stanford, Wharton, and MIT. And then this time around, he applied to the same exact schools, which is quite risky, in my opinion. But, you know, he, that's what he wanted to do. And he didn't get into Stanford, but he got into uh, MIT, Wharton, and Harvard, you know. Um, and so, again, I just want to, you know, um, encourage you guys to, when you have these open-ended questions, you know, Yale asks, uh, this past season about what have you your biggest commitment right there's no way you write that essay successfully without you can't be committed to something without demonstrating impact what is impact it's like having it's like leadership really it's you know impact is part of you know the footprints that you leave behind right and to do that you've led whether you did it with people you did it through ideas you did it through you know um creativity you, however way you did it right it's you can showcase your leadership when dealing with an essay that's very open-ended like that. Um, the same thing with the Harvard essay. But then let's look at an opposite kind of essay. So a school, you know, a school like Kellogg, um, schools like Talk, they, you know, they have very specific question where they ask you about leadership. You know, Talk asks about like, you know, wise leadership. You know, that's sort of how they frame it. You know, um, Kellogg is asking here, and Kellogg, I, I really like their question because you know, they leave, they've given you a blueprint of what they're looking for. And some schools actually do a really good job of helping applicants to figure out what they're looking for. Kellogg tells you, this is a leadership essay. Kellogg tells you, we value teamwork, right? It's an integral part of, you know, the Kellogg experience, who we are. Then they tell you, the one, the recent example. So, and you should just assume that most schools want recent, actually just write, find recent examples, don't go back 10, 12, 15 years, unless it's like some extenuating circumstance. For most people, it wouldn't work. So find a recent example, the past two to three years, um, find meaningful, you know, like make sure the example is meaningful um, 
to you, and then make sure you highlight the lead the challenges you faced, you know, while taking on that leadership role. And it's like a balance. It can't all be about how you led and you're pounding your chest and how you sort of came up with the idea and did everything yourself. You've got to balance I and we. Very, very important. So it's not I, 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 I. But it's I came out with this, I did this, and then we did this together, and we, and so a good balance is very important, okay? And then no, don't lose sight of the last part of the question, which is what did you learn, right? And they're looking for insight. I shared this in my book, The Best Business School Admission Secrets, where I um, talk about how admissions people look at um, the these factors, the P, I call it the PGII factor. They look for passion, they look for guts, they look for impact, they look for insights that's self-awareness what did you learn right the so what's of the of the essays so with Kellogg they're very explicit about leadership and what they're looking for so that's very very important um, and so in this case you know um, an example that I can share with you uh, quickly is this um, uh, ex partner's client who you know she works um, in the financial services industry and she was an associate she was frustrated there weren't as many women at her firm and a lot of the women um, associates would complain and you know the sort of you know the, they had a lot of frustrations about different things and instead of being part of the you know let's just keep gathering together and airing our frustrations she decided to do something about it she started an organization to bring, you know, um, the female associates together. It's very important, right? Um, there was a need. She did something about it, and she didn't just do it herself. She did it with a team, and they were able to initiate a lot of different things on camp, um, on campus, but at her firm, and um, the morale, uh, you know, within the organization changed uh, significantly. Um, the attrition that was quite high um, started to go down, you know. Fewer um, associates were leaving. Um, in fact, there was like an uptick in terms of um, bringing on new female um, staff, um, and it just had a, an overall positive impact. Obviously, she she wasn't saying I did everything or my organization created all the results, but she was able to link what she and her colleagues did and the fact that it's beginning to have a positive impact at her organization. Um, and so that's like an example, but you can, it doesn't have to just be, some people are not gonna have the opportunity to create something from scratch, you know? Um, but again, like maybe there's something you can, you know, suggest to your boss. Maybe there could be a, a deal or a project that is quite challenging that nobody, you know, like it hasn't made any progress. Like look for opportunities, you know, like maybe you you are covering your like, an, um, equity researcher and you're covering a particular space and maybe there's a space that an associate left and there's a void, right? Maybe you can take something on. Find a way to create value and don't stop there. And, you know, and as you do that, you're going to be recognized within your firm and more opportunities will be given to you. So, and what you're able to do ultimately is that you're able to create a um, profile for yourself of being someone who would take initiative, who would step up, who would lead. And that's what admissions people are looking for, ultimately, at the end of the day, right? So um, now I want to tell you, you know, I, you know, I wish I could say, oh, well, I don't wish, but I, you know, everything we do at Expert is it's not Chioma, it's the, the team. I have a fabulous team of amazing um, admission consultants, many of whom have been with Expartus for years, you know, from, you know, some seven years, eight, yeah, nine, ten, eleven years. It's just been extraordinary. And we've been around for, um, you know, over a decade, you know, going into a uh, 15th year this summer. And it's really exciting to see, um, you know, um, the passion that our team um, mates have for this work. They love, love, love what they do. Some of them are, um, uh, have admissions experience. Some of them have, um, you know, interviewed as alumni, and you know they've all come from top MBA programs. They have expertise using the personal branding system at Expartus. I personally train everybody, and we operate as a, you know, as an admissions team in the sense that you know we leverage everybody's expertise. So Rob could be working with a client, but he might have, you know, Rayhan take a look at the application, um, just to look for blinders, you know, to kind of weigh in. Is there anything else that we're not thinking about? Um, when it comes to interview prep, it's very, uh, it's quite standard at Expartus that we would um, help every 
Um, so every client who is a, um, a client who's worked in on you know who's worked with us on a clear school package. So on a school package basis, you know there's no time limit. There's no um, we work with individuals um, till they get done. You know within the admissions season. So some clients start out thinking they're going to do round one, and then they realize you know like oh gosh you know for some reason maybe personal reason work reason they have to go round two. We keep working with them till they're done. You know um, and we are a boutique. We don't take on everybody. Um, we, you know, we want individuals who are not just looking to tweak their application. You know, we are invested in helping our clients really do the heavy lifting, roll up their sleeves, and we roll up our sleeves and we partner with each and every one of our clients to be successful. Um, and the way we do that, and I mentioned this earlier, is the personal branding system. I'm really, really proud of the system because I know it works. You know, it's a system I created after serving on the admissions board at Harvard, after interviewing and and um, evaluating a bunch of client um, applicants and seeing who's getting in, who's not. You know, wh what do admissions people like? What don't they like? All of those elements. You know, it it all. Um, led to the creation of the personal branding system at Expardus. And one thing I want to highlight for you guys is this. At the end of the day, when you finish apply, you know, applying, right, you've done your application, you're now ready to hit submit. You've got to step back and ask yourself, you know, what is the admissions board going to think about me once they've finished looking at all of the many materials I've submitted, the resume, the recommendation letters, my GMAT score or GRE score, my interview um, write-up, all of those things. What do you want them to think about when they have looked at all the data points, right? And admissions people, when they evaluate candidates, when they finish, they grab their piece of paper. Actually, they, there's already a piece of paper uh, of some sort in the folder. And they have to write a review. They have to kind of provide feedback you know, um, to um, the person, the next person who's going to look at the application, right? And so what do you think that feedback is? It's what we call a personal brand statement, the PBS, we call it um, at, at Expardus. And of course, admissions people don't call it a personal brand statement. They don't have any fancy term for it. They just write a summary of who this person is. But that is essentially what a personal brand statement is. And that is like who you are, what you've done, and where are you headed? What are your goals? And because we help our clients figure this all out from the very beginning, it's a different approach, okay? But because we know what ultimately the decision makers are trying to do. They're trying to do exactly what our clients have done on the front end. So once you have a personal brand statement, okay, with clarity around who you are, your values and your passions, right, what's motivating you, um, and then what you've done, like your skill set, you know, where you've been, and a clear sense of the best stories to showcase where you've been, the experiences you've had, the impact you've had, then ultimately, where are you headed? You know, your goals, your aspirations, right? That's what um, we've helped our clients do, and that's what admissions people ultimately are trying to figure out, to figure out if this person is going to be a good fit. So applicants who have a clear sense, haven't gone through the Expartos personal brand system, now before you even decide on who your recommender should be, ideally you should have done you should have a, at least a good sense of what your personal brand is because the people you may think would be the, rec the ideal recommenders may not necessarily be the ideal recommenders okay um, you want to make sure that you know the essay topics you want to choose and write about um, that they reflect your personal brand. So you're kind of going back to the, your branding to look at it as uh, the, the blueprint that determines the direction you should take. Very, very important, okay? And then finally, um, I just wanna highlight the way that you can get in touch with us, right? You can sign up um, online, but to check out the website, expartus.com, and um, the URL for the personal branding system, um, the service we offer um, before, we offer it as a standalone, and you can also, if you're working with us on a school, on a per school package basis, then it's automatically part of your process anyway. Um, I really encourage you to make sure you have a crystal clear sense of what your personal brand is, because that will help you to write powerful, um, differentiated leadership essays that will put you at the top of the pile when um, applying to business school. 
And that's it. I hope we can stay connected. You can email us at expartos.com, um, info at expartos.com. You can call, um, the phone number is there. And definitely um, stay connected with us um, on our social media as well. Okay, so that's it. I hope you have found this information helpful. I, again, want to thank GMAT Club for um, organizing these series across different firms. And I hope um, I will learn more about all of you as you go through your process. Um, check out Expardos website. We will be hosting um, future webinars um, on a variety of different topics. And I hope to see uh, many of you at our next event. Wishing you all the best with your MBA application and um, to your success. Cheers.